What's up guys, and welcome to part 2, episode 2 of Road to World Record. This video I'm going to be going over 4 FMC solves. So I'm going to be going through Australian Nationals 2022 and Oceanics 2022. Not all 6 solves, but I'm going to be showing the full mean from Nationals, which was my PR at the time of 22.33, as well as my best single from Oceanics, which was a 21, and at the time was my PR using DR and HTR. So without further ado, we will get into the first solve. This one from Australian Nationals was a 22. This was, in my opinion, the only like really good scramble of the three. The next two were quite bad in a lot of ways. Um, but this one was quite good. Um, I don't recall the exact EO count. I think it was four bad on multiple axes, but I mean, just intuitively looking at the cube, you can kind of see the EO's pretty good all around. The EO I ended up doing in the solve was a four mover on normal. We have these four bad edges here, and there's a bunch of ways to solve this EO in four. The one that I went with was U to put three on the face, and then F2 to set this one up with L prime, and then F, and that was my EO. It gave me instant DR minus 4C4E on both axes, as you can see. So from here, I switched, and I went to inverse. This one didn't look so great. This one, however, was quite nice, as you can see, all of these blocks. And there's two ways to get a DR in nine moves, and two additional ways to get 10 move DRs. So the first move is D2, and then the nine moves would be like L, F2, or B2, etc. The one I did was like L prime R2, so kind of just inserting that two minus one 4E4X. And then after that, the variation I went with finished with F2, and then L2, and then U. And this gave me a 10 move DR, and it was a one quarter turn, which is very, very nice. Um, from there, I switched, and from that variation, it looks like this. And before I go into the um, like the solution itself, I want to quickly highlight the grave mistake I made, and that was not doing a simple X prime, which seems silly, but I thought that the way to solve this case just by looking at these bars, these two and the edges here, was like U2, B2, and then four more moves. But if you just do an X prime, you can very clearly see it's just like R2, B, uh, U2 or D2, and then two more moves. And had I just looked a little closer, there is a very, very high chance I would have found a 20, which would have given me double OCR at the time, which was definitely like the first like really painful mistake I would say I made on the, uh, on the road to the promised land, so to speak. But anyways, we'll go into my stupid solution. So I did U2, B2, R2, F2, D2, L, and then I saw that you can solve the right and left layers while solving the slice, kind of. You can do like R2, F2, and then it's just this floppy reduction type case. So that gave a direct 22, but you can change it to be a 21 to slice. However, I believe optimal from a skeleton was a 22. Now for one of the variations of DR, this is back to normal where it's just four more moves to HTR. The one of the ones which leads to a 20, I believe there were multiple, but this is just one that I will highlight. This uses um, like the B2, L2, D prime variation on inverse after those first few moves. So this is one of the nine move DRs. You can just do L2, D2, F2, R prime, and that gives HTR. And you can sort of see the F and B layers, even though these don't end up cancelling with um, any moves outside of the DR, you can kind of see it's already a floppy reduction case, like if you just do something like that, solves the layers, and since it's a 13 move HTR, this is obviously still something you would like to consider. So optimal, you just do U2, which is the first move to make these squares, B, F prime, and then D2, R2, F prime, B. And that would have given a 20, which would have been OCR single, and had I gotten the same results on the next two, it would have given me tight OCR me. So that's uh, solve one, we will now move on to solve two. For the second scramble, I got another 22, and this scramble was quite a bit worse than the first one. There were very few four-move non-miss EOs. The EO layout was four bad, six bad, six bad. 
But the one kind of saving grace of the scramble was the fact that there was a three move Nis EO, which I ended up using for my final solution. So starting on the inverse scramble, we have four bad on green front. We have these two here, which are bad edges. And in the back we have this and this, which are bad edges. And I saw that if you do an F, these two greens will stay bad. This one is an additional green, which will become bad. And this one is a blue, which will become bad. So the three greens are the ones excluding orange. And this one's an orange and will be back here. So I knew that you could do F on inverse switch, L2F, and that gives an EO like so. So that's what I started with. From there, I saw that you can do D prime to give DR minus 4C4E, and there's a lot of blocks. And there's kind of a bunch of like variations of this you can do that add a move. And as you'll see, one of them actually, I forgot to check and I realized after the comp, like I think I thought about it like in a dream or something, woke up, tried it, and I saw that it leads to a 21 instead of a 22. But it was, a, it was a bit of a trickier one to find, but definitely something like you should know if you're a serious DR solver. Uh, anyways, the general structure of the solution is you do like U2, and then you can do F2 or B2, and then like LR, and then put the columns in. The variation I went with goes L as an inserted move, and then F2 instead of B2, and then L prime, R prime, and U prime. And that gives a 10 move DR with, I believe, three quarter turn corners. I didn't really know my subsets well at the time, but I can see now that this is three quarter turn 4C, 4E, which isn't a bad case. Uh, from here, I switched, and this isn't like exactly one to one what I did. I did like a lead slice skeleton and then solved the slice in zero moves later. Um, I actually didn't find the, the solve slice in zero until I think the last like three minutes. So I had a 23 before that. But this is kind of the general structure of the solution um, on inverse. So I did L2, U2, and then I can make a quarter turn of progress by doing L, like so. And then there's a bunch of different ways to solve HDR from here. Like you can do F2 or fat F2, L2, and then the next move can be widened, then you do a quarter turn of progress, and then the move after that, the half turn can also be widened. So there was a lot to check. And I think one of the first things I tried was this solution, but it took me a while to refine it because I didn't know which moves I widened. Uh, but anyways, the solution from here goes F2, R2, D2, R. And then again, you have the choice of F2 or B2. You did F2, D2, R prime, and that gives HTR. And as you can see, it's just a two move finish, which is lucky, but again, not actually the best thing on the scramble. So if we backtrack to normal and we just undo what I did, so there's U, R, L, F2, L prime. Instead of inserting the move there, you can just do F2 straight away. And originally when I was checking this nine move DR, I saw that it was too bad quarter turn 4C4E, which is a good subset, but it was not very good on inverse or normal with just the nine move variations. What I failed to realize is that you can insert U2 or D2 at this point, which I only realized like after the competition. And if you insert, in this case, D2, and then do L prime, R prime, U prime, you get a different 10 move DR. And from here, it's actually very easy just to find the rest of the 21 on normal. You just do L prime to make a quarter turn of progress, D2 to set the bars up, R2, B2, and then L, I believe. Oh no, sorry, you do L prime. That gives a 15 move HTR. And then to solve the left and right layers, you can sort of see if you do like R2, F2, it gives like almost floppy reduction, but it's like a 2E, 2E off. So you do F2 first, which sort of accounts for it. And then R2, F2, and then it's just a simple three move finish like that to give a 21. So that's it for solve number two. I'll now move on to the final solve of this meme. Now for solve number three, which was a 23, which gave me first place for Australian Nationals and broke one of my oldest PRs. It was a, my former PR was 24.6 from mid-2016 and this was a 22.3 about six-ish years later, a little over six years later. 
And at the time, this ranked me fifth in the world. So I, I was relatively happy with it, even like the day after the comp when I like analyzed stuff with Nissi and saw I, you know, saw what I missed. I didn't feel too bad. The first solve was definitely painful, and the second one, to some extent, a bit of a lesser extent. This one I did miss optimal by one. However, it's quite difficult to find. I'll show one way to find it using with like no NIS, just for brevity's sake. Um, but it can also be explained as a like uh, an 18 move HTR with NIS. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Starting on inverse, the EO I did was four bad on white front. Did R prime F prime to set these up. You'll sort of notice it's a similar case to solve one where I did like this and then U two. But that sort of idea didn't work out, so I did R prime F prime L U. And that instantly gave me DR minus 4C4E on this axis. So from there, I switched, went to the normal scramble. This didn't look very good. And when I was checking here, I saw you could do F to give DR minus 4C2E, which I believe is a trigger I haven't like shown in any of my reconstructions thus far, but this is kind of the other remaining one of like the three quote unquote RZP triggers. So I then switched for a second time in the attempt, and this is what the cube looks like after that F pre move and the EO from before. And you can sort of see this pair here, we almost have like the RU2 R prime type thing set up. Here all you have to do is a simple R prime and then U2. And then you can see there's two ways to do this. You can either do BR2B or FD2F. The one I did was BR2B. Uh, kind of just arbitrarily, but it did make a bunch of blocks. And the HDR subset was fake HDR corners in a three-quarter turn fashion, and it was two edges missing. I didn't really realize this at the time, but after Aiden Bryant did some research into HDR subsets, it turns out this three-quarter turn like corner subset as a whole is really, really bad. Like, kind of on par with five-quarter turns in terms of, like, how often the optimal solution is like 14, 13 moves, etc. Uh, but anyways, this is what I went with. I really didn't have much else on the scramble. I was trying desperately to find an excuse to check like any other DR, but I just couldn't. And the solution I went with was I did L to make a quarter turn of progress, B2, L2, and then D2, because in order to make the next quarter turn of progress, you need to do three half turns. It's just how this set works. Uh, and it's just to do with the corners, not even really to do with the edges. Um, the corners will just always need to be put in this like diagonal configuration. And then again for this solve, I did a rewrite later. I lost the notes for like my original skeleton and how I rewrote it, but it's just like a pretty standard plus zero. I guess the only noteworthy thing is instead of doing like pure like widening, I sort of abused the fact that like this blocky fish shape pattern which comes up in these kind of more obscure corner cases. I sort of took advantage of the fact that you can solve this two different ways. Like you either do U prime F2 and then insert the block, or you can insert this block first and then finish like that. And it essentially amounts to an eight minus eight, three edge insertion with like this sort of alg. Um, so it's a good one to know. But anyways, just going back to my actual solution. So after those half turns, I did R prime to set up one quarter turn, and then it's just simple four more moves, D2, L2, B2, and then L prime, and then you can see it's a pretty short finish, F, B, U2, F prime, B prime, and because we had an F on normal, that F on inverse cancels one move, so it was originally a 24 to slice, but it gets reduced to 23 to slice, and then gets reduced further to a 23. And I'll just quickly show what the optimal could look like on inverse. So one way you can think about it is you do R, so it's essentially the same thing, L or R, I'm just choosing the one that accounts for the rewrite instantly. And then here you can either switch and do seven more moves to HTR and then find a four move finish. Or if you're looking at it on this side of the scramble, you can do F2, R2, which is kind of the same setup moves as before, because we now just do a U2 to get to where we were, but you just insert a B2 beforehand, and then do U2, and then do the quarter turn of progress, which isn't something I really knew was a thing, I know it now, but at the same time, it's kind of rare I end up going for 
these sorts of three half turn between quarter turn cases because they just don't come up that often and when they do the DR usually isn't short enough to justify it. But then from here it's pretty simple, just U2, L2, B2, R prime, and then you can just go to solved in two more moves like that. And that could have given me a 22. And if you do the math, 20 missed on the first, 21 missed on the second, 22 missed on the third. Could have technically tied world record mean, however I do think the th that third one is quite difficult to find, especially when you consider that there's another variation of that 10 move uh, DR to check, and you basically have to either find that very long HTR or the NIS one, and I really just don't feel that bad about missing it. I do think this was definitely an OCR fail at the time, I mean single obviously, because that one was very easy, but realistically this was probably more like a 21.3 fail. Um, so that's it for the meter 3. I'm now going to quickly show the 21 I got on the last solve of Oceanics. Now to round out the video, here is the 21 I got at Oceanics, which secured first place and inaugural Oceanic champion, which I was quite happy with in spite of the, the rest of the meme being a complete train wreck. Anyways, this scramble was actually very, very good. I would say this was the best scramble I had gotten up until this point in terms of like EOs for DR stuff. And the EO I went with was a 3 mover off of Too Bad on uh, Orange Front. So you can see only this edge and this edge back here are bad. And this EO had like an HTR equal variation, you could either do LB2L or RD2R. The one I went with was LB2 and then L prime. And looking at it on inverse, I don't think I saw anything on this axis, but if you rotate this way and then do a D prime, it gives DR minus 3C2E, which is like the RU R prime style trigger. From there I switched and it looks something like this and you can sort of see that if you just do an L2 it makes the little column of pieces for the pair to insert uh, but it puts the edge in the wrong place so instead of just doing an L2 you need to do B2 and then R2 to set it up and here you can like and try inserting a move beforehand if you want I tried that I got nowhere I just did the most direct DR, which was B prime, D prime, B, and then D. This gave me a 10 move DR, and this was three quarter turn corners. I would say at this point, so after Australian Nationals and FMC New Zealand Nationals, I had finally gotten the hang of like HTR subset stuff. And I knew that this was three quarter turns, and it was 4C, 4E, which I knew was a good enough set. Uh, there's also blocks, which may or may not mean something. I usually think it's like a, at least a favorable sign. Um, so I was able to go through this like a lot more productively. The solution I ended up going with was F prime to reduce to two quarter turn corners, but it was like the bad two quarter turn corners. Usually you would approach this uh, subset on the other side of the scramble and reduce to like standard two quarter turn instead of the bad one. But I didn't find anything that way, so I just tried this, since it's a valid enough approach. And then did D2 and then F to set up to one quarter turn corners. And then here you can just make the bars while setting the edges up favorably by doing a D2 turn. And then here it's three more moves to HCR by doing F2, R2, B. But you can also insert a move beforehand, which is what I ended up doing, as I saw the initial solution looked close to being solved, but like well, not so much close to solve. Um, by doing the three move variation instead of four, it looked like it was close to a 2e2e two -E skeleton. And this inserted move is effectively like a six minus five. So I did, um, I inserted an r2 beforehand. And then I did f2, r2, b, like so. And then here you can see it's just three more moves to solve. You just do f2, u2, l2, which gives a 21. You'll probably notice that like the b, f2, could be sliced out, so I tried rewriting it to 20 to slice and then finding something better, but it turns out that this was just optimal from the DR. Which, on the one hand, a little unfortunate I couldn't save that extra move and get OCR single again. But on the other hand, I believe this was the first time I had ever gotten optimal 
from a DR in comp. I don't know if I got optimal on my 23 at New Zealand Nationals because I threw out my notes in just like a fit of tilt and rage. Um, but regardless, this was a nice confidence booster, kind of knowing that like I have it in me to you know get better than just like middling 22s and 23s and I just need to compete more basically. Uh, but yeah, that does it for this episode of Road to World Record. The next one will be going over sort of my first batch of OCRs in 2023. So that will be turning in Townsville's Mina 3 as well as the Melbourne Summer 20. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.